Yeah. Help me put it down. I'm gonna climb up there. Okay, this side down first. Oh, I did that wrong, darn it. Okay, rear first, sorry. You can't reach it. Okay, you do the front, I'll do the rear. Okay, rear first. Front first. Nice. Okay, let's hop up there. It's filming. All right. Come here, Huck. You want to say it? You say it. Look Welcome right. to Adventure Dad. Thank you, Henry. Today is a snow day here in Boise. We Hi, have. Man. It's slush day. It's slush day, so it's an ugly day here in Boise. We have our new trailer. I'm working on cabinet designs for that. And one of the things I'm trying to do is perfect this elevator bed system. Um, worked really, really well on our trip this summer, but there's a couple of measurements, a couple of things I want to change. So I'm out here um, getting some measurements, putting everything in the Fusion 360 and then making adjustments there. So I thought I'd just show you some of the measurements for our bed system. This is a full size mattress going side to side in a seven foot wide trailer. So our trailer is seven foot wide, seven and a half foot tall on the outside. Um, we ordered it extra tall in order to get enough room to get the bed up and this Velocirax in. My new trailer is seven foot tall, so we're gonna have to kind of engineer everything down a little bit, a little bit less room for air. All right, so here's how we take the bike rack out. Henry, you wanna help me? Sure. All right, so the first thing we do is we take the bike out and this just lifts out like this. And then Huck's gonna get in and take out the brackets. actually clip in right down there so we can do that later. All right I'm gonna pull this out and I'm gonna hand it to you on the ground Got it. and we're actually just gonna lead it on the fence over here on that side okay? okay. Every time I make a video my phone rings. <laughs> okay you ready? Okay now I'm gonna have you spin around to your left like that. Yep good job. One of the things I'm trying to play with is these lift struts and how strong they need to be, how much force they need to have. So right now, on the rear, these rear two are 40 pound struts, 36 inches long, 40 pound rating. As you can see, it's kind of hard to pull down. So we do the rear first until it sets right here, nearly almost on this rail. Huck will go do the front. And the front are 100 pound lift struts, also 36 inches. So there we are. So that was the front and the back. Huck, can you put the front back up again, please? Okay, so Huck just did that once again. Those are 100 pound lift strut on either side and they support the front half of the bed. And this is the rear with the 40 pound struts. It's also pretty cold. It's been single digits here for a couple of days. It's about 38 today. So these lift struts sometimes are a little slow in the cold, as you can see. So here's the hardware. I'll show it to you in the up position. What we used were, thank you, Spencer. What we used were lift struts, or pardon me, unistruts. So this is just unistrut channel. This is factory brand unistrut right here. It's one and five eighths inch channel, very standard for uh, commercial industrial applications. And then we used a unistrut trolley this is a half inch bolt with a nylock washer, you know, try to keep this loose. So unistrut trolley, unistrut channel, and I use these unistrut specific brackets here. I didn't need to do that, but I really wanted to get my whole spacing right. So, and then to hold this in, this is a quarter 20 bolt going into a rib nut. So I held these in with just two rib nuts into the side frame of the trailer. You have this angle iron that bolts to the unistrut. And essentially I took the unistrut all the way to the top. And then to connect it to the bed frame, I use this construction bracket and I did know I did have to angle this off here or put a radius on this edge because it was coming in and depending on the angle was kind of interfering with this edge of the unistrut. So we, this is just a framing bracket here. I didn't find a Simpson one so I used a MyTec. Um, this spacer right here, this is the problem with these cargo trailers. They are not square. My cargo trailer is severely racked. So my bed is square square. The bed frame is within an eighth of an inch square. 
um, I got it in here and I ended up screwing around for a couple of days if you notice on this other side it's just mounted flush with the bed frame okay so this spacer is in here because my trailer is racked it's essentially square at the bottom but then as you travel up the trailer kind of is wrapped this way and I had to put a spacer in to push my bed back so that's something you'll experience where I noticed it was right up here in this corner and I was actually trying to build pads that slid in this front corner along the wall until I realized that what I really needed was a spacer so that's one thing you're gonna have to play with is if you get your bed nice and square and you get it up here and it's just canted in the tracks even though everything else should be right what you need to do is play with your spacing on the sides here to push it front or back and that kind of gets it off the wall of the trailer a little bit. Are you a cameraman? Yeah, just sitting here. Don't move it around too much though. Alright? You want to try to keep it level. Okay. Here's the bed in the up position. This is a, once again, this is a full-size mattress. It's a Zinnia 8-inch deep full-size mattress. It is amazingly comfortable. Like really, really, really comfortable. While I'm up here, I'll get some measurements for you. So our trailer, interior wall to interior wall is 81 inches exactly. So we're 81 inches wide inside. My bed frame, okay, the bed frame is 77 and a half inches. And that gives me about half an inch, about an inch inside away from the mattress. I could actually shorten the bed frame a little bit, which is probably what I do next time. I think I'd narrow it, I'd bring it down a little bit. Uh, full size mattress is 75 inches long, so I think I would have mine a box inside of about 75 and a half. Um, this is good quality pine, um, really expensive right now. So this is just a clear pine from Home Depot, and it's a pine one by six. On the bottom here, I have half inch plywood. Oh, the other thing that's really important with these beds is spacing, vertical spacing. So um, when I'm up here sleeping, I'm 6'1". So here I am, I'm 6'1", and I can lay down just fine. But the other thing is, is I'm tall from the waist up and I can almost sit up in this bed. So from the top of the mattress and to the ceiling, we have about 30.5 inches, which is a really good spacing. And I'll show you underneath here real quick. Okay, so this is our other bed here, and one. Oh. I thought you were my cameraman, dude. Just throwing the ball for the dog. Ah, yeah, because once you were up there, I got it the right Nothing height. Nothing to do. I got it right the <laughs> right height, and just watch. So this is our other bed here. Essentially, this side folds down. The table drops down. This is part of it here. The other thing you want to maintain is enough distance between this bunk and this bunk. You don't want these bunks to get claustrophobic. So right now we have this one spaced out at 28 and a half inches. Personally, I wouldn't, as you can see, I can't quite sit up in here. I wouldn't put them any closer together. So I'm trying to maintain, there's a lot of balance in here. You're trying to maintain a decent sitting position off the ground with your seat. And then you're also trying to make sure you have enough room between this bunk up here and then this bunk here and the ceiling. So lots of balance for us. This orientation with a little bit more on the top, a little bit less for the kids down here worked really well. We have um, more we have more room on the bed than you. You do? Uh -huh. Yeah, your bed's a little bigger. I'm just saying you have less room this oh. way. Alright, is this one front? This is do the front first, right? On the way up? I think so. Okay, so here I'll, I'll put the Put the front up and we'll get some measurements. Can we do it? Here we are. Once again, these are 36 inch long, 100 pound lift struts in the front position. These rear ones back here are 40 pound struts. So 36 inches long, 10 millimeter ball stud ends. I used brackets from Lift Support Depot. I tried them in all the positions. I still have them here on the bed and in the rear position. But with the 100 pound lift, and whatever torque I was putting on it, I could not use their factory bracket. So this is actually a framing bracket. This is a framing L and I bought a 10 millimeter ball stud and drilled it in. This is about an eighth inch bracket. So that's what I used here on the front. Now, as far as measurements, 
you have to excuse me, every time I make a video, my phone rings or my neighbor decides to do woodworking. Um, okay, so as far as measurements, the bed itself is two inches from the end, from this front edge of the unistrut. From the unistrut to the bed is two inches. The bed frame is 58 inches wide. So total from the unistrut to the end of the bed is 61 inches. So from the front edge of the unistrut to the bed is 61 inches right here. Bottom of the bed to where the ball studs mount all the way around is an, or is an inch and a quarter up. These lower ball studs here are one half of an inch above this top plate. Now how I did that is actually the top of the cabinet is right here and then this is just a half inch cover plate so I could keep everything nice and clean and also set the bed on and have a nice reliable spot to set the bed. Okay as far as spacing the first ball stud here from the rear is three and a quarter inches from the rear of the bed. So from the rear of the bed to this rear ball stud mount is three and a quarter inches. From the rear of the bed, let me get this right here, right there. Okay. So from the rear of the bed to this front ball stud mount is 35 inches. Now if we were to go off of the unistrut, which once again is two inches back from the end of the bed, but then the unistrut is 28 inches. So the front, the pardon me, the rear ball stud is 28 inches from the unistrut, unistrut. And this front ball stud is 60 inches from the unistrut. What I was trying to get was this rear ball stud towards the rear of the bed and this front ball stud about halfway, somewhere in the middle of the bed. That's also why we have double weight. There was some Kentucky windage on those measurements, but um, next time I'd probably lower the weight on these. The other thing that makes this project tricky is, well, just the sheer iterations. I had this bed in and out a dozen times. It's crazy. Um, but I had to pick up a wall stud. I really wanted to make sure I picked up a wall stud on these bottom two. So I had to measure, get my measurements, get my angles, make sure that everything was, was parallel essentially. Um, so I found a ball stud here. And I found a ball stud, pardon me, a ball stud. I found a, I found a stud, a framing member here, found a framing member here. That's where I mounted my ball studs. And then that dictated roughly where they were on the bed. Really not an easy thing to standardize, uh, figure out where those were. Okay, so another couple of real quick measurements here. In the up position, my bed has 27 inches of lift. So I'm able to get from the top of this rail to the bottom of the bed, 27 inches. Now my, the top rail right here is 48 and three quarters inches off the floor. So 48 and three quarters here. I have 27 inches here. My ceiling on the interior from floor to ceiling, my clearance is 86 and a half inches. So 86.5 floor to ceiling. Um, and we do have enough room. One of the other cool things is th with these beds is you have enough room to store your bedding up here. So if you look, there's enough room up there to store your bedding, which is really nice. That's not large enough for like really big down comforters, but for stuff you'd use in the summer or whatever, um, or good sleeping bags, plenty of room up there. So what I have right now is I have about three inches of clearance up there. My from the bottom of the bed to my ceiling is just a shade over 11 inches. If you pull it on the sides, you can twist it a little bit. So I have to remember to pull it equally. This is a late minute addition, little edit here to the video. I ordered my lift, lift supports and products from liftsupportsdepot.com. Great customer support. I really enjoyed working with them. Um, I'd email them, talk to the same person every time, get my orders figured out. Really, really had a good experience. This is my rearmost or my lighter of the lift struts. So that's ST360P40 S10. Um, basically, it's 36 inches, it's 40 pounds, it has a 10 millimeter ball stud. Just to show you, the 36 inches is the extended length. So if we go from essentially the center of the ball 
stud. Sorry, I can't see what you can see. If we go from the center of the ball stud to the center of the ball stud, it's 36 inches. That was probably some horrible filming. From the edge of my bed here to the wall, I have an inch and three quarters, just a shade over inch and three quarters on the passenger side. On the driver's side, I have just under an inch and three quarters. So it's about dead center. Once again, before I figured out what was going on and how racked this was, I was rubbing right here until I put that spacer in. Let me lift the mattress up. I have, this is half inch here to match the walls. And then I have these one buys, some wiring remnants. And you can see I put the lights here. These are the same lights that are on the ceiling. Um, so we have the ceiling lights that I put four underneath, wired those all in. You can kind of see how I did that. It's just a couple hands, it's real easy. That's maybe a 15 or 20 pound bump to get it up. And a lot of times I just use my shoulder to get it started. I just come in here and there we are. If it wasn't so cold, those would just power right up. This is the bed and it's up position. I have a light switch right here and a USB charger. Pretty handy little USB charger location. Do you have um, any merch yet? I have no merch yet because this is more fun to me than making up merch. I love just going to bed and thinking about my trailer. Hop up. I know, I have to take Oh, those are muddy shoes, aren't they? Okay, Hawk has something to say. So I just said like, subscribe, comment, do those YouTube things. And Huck wants to say... If you need merch, just say that in the comments below and he will make you some soon. Thank you, Henry. Thanks, everybody. Have a good day. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so here's a couple...